Ladies and gentlemen, Jasper Carrot. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Malcolm. Well, um, Malcolm will be back later on in the program. <laughs> you won't turn your sets off now, will you? <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've walked into this wall again. <laughs> Like a song each show, you say. <laughs> <laughs> Get it over with. <laughs> I'm into, uh, into words at the moment. And one of my favourite words at the present time is frocks. <laughs> what, is, what does that sum up to you, frocks? It's like, I don't know. It's like women with, like, those terrelene dresses on with big roses and... Bosoms hanging out, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if you noticed there's a, there's a new receptionist as you came in tonight. She's got a frock on. You noticed that? Didn't you? She used to be an air hostess for the Wright brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that, uh, that is what a frock is all about. Um, and it's interesting because I did a wedding about, about three months ago. And uh, this chap asked me to be an usher at his wedding. Um, worst usher at his wedding. And I went along, and I wasn't too keen, but like, he wanted to use my address so he could use the local church. And that's why I think I was asked, really. And I went along to be this usher. And it was a very strange affair, because the church in this village where I live is, is a very old church, but they've built a new section on and like, well, yeah, when you go and you see sort of these old pews here, there's not very many of them, and there's a great big sort of column, big modern column, and then there's all these other pews, you see. And I went along and I got top, top hat and tails on, and I looked pretty silly in top hat and tails. I made a fatal mistake of getting fitted with the hat and then having a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't sort of like the, like the epitome of sartorial elegance by any means. And the bridegroom came up and he said, right, he said, we've got hundreds of people coming. Hundreds of them, he said. And what I want you to do is get all the relatives in the new pews, because there's hundreds of relatives. He said, I want you to get the friends in the old pews. And I said, right. He said, friends in the old pews, relatives in the new ones. Right. How will I tell the difference? He said, well, ask them. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> And anyway, like I was sort of, I was there fairly early, and uh, one or two uh, frocks turned up. So and I thought, got to be relatives, got to be sure enough relatives. And like the husbands were there, and they were in demob suits. <laughs> <laughs> you got frocks and demob suits. He said. And I had to pin the carnations on the frocks because they'd arrive late because it was a bit of a rush wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and I got these sort of carnations in this pin. And there was these frocks that I had to... And it's really awkward, because, like, there's only li little straps here, aren't there? And, like, there's bosom out there. And, <laughs> and I was, like, sort of, excuse me, you've got to have this. She said, yeah, mm, yeah. And, I, and, I was, like, and she was thinking, like, I bet he's dying to touch my breasts. <laughs> I was thinking, I hope to God I don't touch her breasts. <laughs> and I, and I, was, I was a bit ham-handed. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and all the blood was running down the floor. <laughs> Anyway, I gave that up as a bad job and used sellotape. <laughs> and I'd been there for oh, about a quarter of an hour, and a few relatives had come in. There was about a hundred pews, you see, and there was about sort of eight or nine relatives and sort of stuck right at the back of these pews. So I thought, well, I'll fill them up from the back. And they were sort of sitting at the back there. And these friends kept turning up, you see, and I was saying, friends or relatives? And they're going, friends. I said, well, look, uh, could you sit in these old pews here, please? Because all these seats here are for the relatives. And they're saying, no problem, of course. Fine. Not a very good view of the altar, but, like, if you crane your head, you'll be all right. <laughs> no problem. 
Friends and relatives. Friends, would you like to sit in these old pews? Certainly, no problem. At all. Bom, bom. Friends and relatives. Friends, could you sort of sit down here? Thank you. Friends and relatives. Friends. And they got to sort of the point where, like, it was getting pretty crowded in there. And there were no relatives. Uh, friends and relatives. Uh, friends, right. Could you sit in... I'm not getting in there. <laughs> well, it's, there's plenty of space here. No, there isn't. Look, it's packed. What about all... These are for the relatives. I'm awfully sorry. Could you sit in these old pews? Well, it's a bit... Come on, no. Come on, move up, move up. And they go... Hey, uh, no. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> No more, please. Now there's plenty of room. Isn't there? I'm not getting in. You're getting in there. Like somebody bowed down to pray and I stuck one on top of him. And... <laughs> friends and relatives, friends. Would you like to get? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> please, no more. No more. Oh. Thought well, I'd better go and do something about this. So I went up and I said, "Look, you've got loads of friends coming. There's no relatives." He went. Uh... Yeah, he said, oh, that, that, there's hundreds of relatives. He said, uh, just put a few more and you'll be all right, all right. And I'm going, Ugh, no more, please. <laughs> Only a few, please, no more. Friends and relatives, friends, would you like? I'm not getting you. Yes, you are. Oh, no, no, please. Oh, oh. So I went up and I said, it's getting really crowded in there and there's no relatives. He said, well, uh, oh, stall. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly I heard, and I dashed out, and there was the bride coming up the aisle, and there was no relatives. I was, I was I said, your missus is here, and like, there's no relatives. He went, oh dear. Get the friends into the relatives' pews. Right. No more, please. No. It's all right, you're going in there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you took one out, and they all went, Whoa. Thank you very much. Thank you, mate. It's all right. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you very much. We won't have to. No, no, you're all right. Thank you. So I went back out to greet the bride. And then behind the bride's car, just arrived, were 40, like, Morris Miners, Austin Cambridges, like, borderline MOT passes. <laughs> Disgorging hundreds of frocks and demob suits. <laughs> Where do we sit? Hang on. So I went back in and I rushed. I said, Your relatives are here. He said, Get the friends back in the old pews. <laughs> no! No! Yes, no! <laughs> of course, like, then when the relatives hadn't waited, they're coming in. Where are we sitting? I don't know. <laughs> And there's just absolute chaos going in, see? And like, and the, the choir boys were there, you know, dashing water over, and the candles are falling down. There's this curse, we lost the vicar. <laughs> he was under a pile of frocks. <laughs> <laughs> this is a script of a programme you may have seen on, on television called Magic Roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> I, I nicked this script from the BBC. This is a script that has never actually been showed of Magic Roundabout, but I believe it's coming out in the next series. <clears throat> <laughs> Hello, children. It's quarter to six, and time once again for Magic Roundabout. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I wonder where Florence is, said Dougal. I'm over here, said Florence. Hello, Florence, said Dougal. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. <laughs> Boy! Hello, Florence and Dougal, said Zebedee. Oh, hello, Zebedee, said Dougal and Florence. Hello, Zebedee, Florence and Dougal, said Dylan. Hello, Dylan. <laughs> Said Zebedee, Florence and Dougal. I say, said Dylan. What, said Dougal? Boy! <laughs> Pardon, said Zebedee. Nothing, said Dougal. I wasn't talking to you, said Dylan. Oh, said Zebedee. Dylan shouted Dougal. Yes, said Dylan. I wonder if Florence is a virgin. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> Drops them for certain, said Zebedee. How do you know, said Dylan? <laughs> Boy! <laughs> well, to my knowledge, half of Toy Town knows of her, all his uncle pleasure. <laughs> And let's face it, Noddy's the biggest ram round here and he reckons he's sport. <laughs> Said Zebedee. <laughs> I, 
can hear you, said Florence. It's not true. Nadia and I are just good friends. <laughs> Robbie said Dougal. It's all over the canteen. <laughs> everyone, everyone knows about you, you brazen hussy, you lousy old flea bag, said Florence. <laughs> Call yourself a dog. I've seen better hair in a lavatory brush. <laughs> Boy, now look, said Zebedee. Let's try and get things together. Things are getting out of hand. Let's get back to the storyline. It's a crummy story anyway, said Dougal stubbornly. Boing! No, it's not, said Zebedee commandingly. Who cares, said Dylan dejectedly. Well, I like it, said Florence, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's obvious, said everybody cockily. Boing! <laughs> now look, said Zebedee, let's try and get things together. Well, I'm not working with that fat bat anymore, said Dougal. I'm off to join the Muppets, so there. Good riddance, said Florence. Knickers, said Dougal. <laughs> That's no way to talk to a lady, said Dylan, knowing when he's on to a good thing. <laughs> you know, I fancied you for a long time, said Florence. <coughs> I fancied you too, said Dylan. <laughs> Where do we go from here, said Florence? Boy! <laughs> time for bed, said Zebedee. <laughs> always been to go to America and I realized it um, <laughs> last year and uh, I don't know what it is I, I suppose you see so much about it and read so much about it I've always wanted to go to America and I finally flew out from Birmingham to LA that's uh, Los Angeles <laughs> <laughs> just checking it's not Lower Accrington or <laughs> <laughs> and when I came back uh, funnily enough it, it struck me when I got back because people said like what was it like? And I said, well, it didn't surprise me because what I expected, I saw, you know, nothing surprised me. I just, it was just exactly as you see. It's, it's portrayed so well, you know, you like, flew into LS, Los Angeles and it's nice and warm and there's cars everywhere and people chewing gum and all the police are deformed. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in wheelchairs or we one arm. <laughs> Flashing Max on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, in fact, I always have this trouble with the police, and I got stopped by the police one day. I'd been there about four days, and I'd hired a car, and there was this place uh, in, in Hollywood called rent a -Rec. <laughs> True, as I stand here, there's a big neon sign saying rent a -Rec. And I hired this Mustang uh, three-wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> including the steering wheel <laughs> balancing job and in America there's a blanket speed limit of 55 mile an hour so you can't go over 55 mile an hour no matter where you are and, uh, and I thought well I'm only here for a couple of weeks stuff it you know and I'm <laughs> hammering along at 83 <laughs> and I'm, I was going along the Ventura Highway and I've been there a few days and I'm going it's in the afternoon and suddenly like in the mirror I saw this cop car, and they don't go e or there. They go whip, 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 whip. <laughs> and he pulled up by the side. He said, "Okay, buddy, pull over, <laughs> <laughs> and keep your hands where we can see it. <laughs> They're on a the bloody steering wheel." Right? <laughs> Stupid request. <laughs> you're gonna go. Ah. <laughs> So like I pulled over, and, they, and like in this country, they pull up in front of you, don't they? Well, they don't over there. They pull up behind you. <laughs> and sort of, I was sitting there, and I sort of wound the window down, and suddenly there's this six gun in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never had a gun shoved in my ear before. I've had a few other things, but I've never had a gun shoved in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy, you got your license? And, uh, Mm-hmm. Okay, nice and easy. I said, it's, 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 it's in me bag. Said, okay, slow. <laughs> Steve Austin, you know. <laughs> and I gave him my licenses, and there was this gun in, I couldn't get over that, I was petrified. And he started flipping through my license. Now, 
I don't know whether you think this is funny, but it's really true. It's really true. He started flipping through my license and he suddenly said, Hey! English, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a pretty good driver. Uh, <laughs> you sure are, man. You've been endorsed three times. <laughs> I've been around a bit, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and James on, you know. And, uh, he said, uh, "You English, huh?" I said, "Yeah, yeah." Born and bred? Yeah. Do you know Mrs. Creswell in Blackpool? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long hair, couple of legs? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you let me off. You let me off. And I found television in America fascinating, you know, fascinating, because in Los Angeles there's 14 channels to choose from. Isn't that amazing? Like the, like, uh, the TV Times over there, it's like a great big manual. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it takes you a week to get through. <laughs> and when you find out what you want to see, you've missed it. <laughs> and it's just amazing, you can just sort of sit there all in here pressing buttons. And you're like, you go to sleep watching television. <laughs> you wake up next morning, bing, 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 bing. bing. And uh, they have, they have adverts, like every two or three minutes. And it's really confusing because they don't tell you when they're coming. Now, because over here, you see, like, you're going, like, end of part one and there's a, a star, and then you get your adverts. Over there, it's just like, in. And you're, like, you're watching a Western or something, and John Wayne's got this burning on, Marjorie, your, your eyes are just like dandruff. <laughs> And every other advert's for constipation pills. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Like, and there was this big furore because they got this, I don't know, some, like, some massive star who'd never done adverts in his life to do a constipation pill advert. And there was front page news and everything. You know, the pound was about fortunes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was doing constipation pills advertising. Amazing. I don't know. I didn't even know he was adver you know. And, um, and there's hundreds of quiz shows. Dozens of them. Thousands of them. Every minute. That's why there's so many cars in America, because they win them on quiz shows. <laughs> and if you're sitting in the audience, hey, uh, uh, you're on the third row, fourth seat, you won a car! <laughs> oh, gee whiz, not a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's the booby, sir, but like, you've won a car. I've got four cars already. <laughs> I want to win the garden spade. Is that going? No, I'm sorry, that's top prize. <laughs> Damn, I've got four cars. Man, our garden needs digging. <laughs> You can see people at traffic lights. Where'd you win your car, buddy? <laughs> Sailor of the century or something. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> lovely stuff, lovely stuff. And, and also, what I found was strange is that we both speak the, the same language, you know, it's, it's English. But it, it can be completely different. And you can be as confused as, as anywhere, like France or Germany. Because, like, different things have different meanings. And, um... I, one, one day we were talking around this table just with a couple of girls and a couple of blokes and we're talking about sex, right? And, uh, and I said, do you know what really turns me on? Garters. <laughs> and the blokes moved away. Because <laughs> garters over there are braces, you know? <laughs> the women thought they were onto a winner, you know? <laughs> no trouble with him, did I? <laughs> And, uh, and uh, things like handbag. You see, they don't know what a handbag is. It's a pocketbook or a purse. And oh, what happened once? I, I said to this guy, and I said, to, yeah, someone's nicked me pen. Huh? <laughs> you mean someone's been scoring it with a knife? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he went up to a policeman and said, excuse me, I've had my handbag nicked. <laughs> Got your license, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I learned a gr I learned a great American word out there, which I'd ne I've never come across it before, and it's zits. <laughs> and, I'd, and I'd heard it several times, and I didn't really want to ask why, you know, what it was all about. But like eventually, I said, "What? What is zits?" And zits is an American slang word for our acne. You know, we call it a we, we call it a spot. 
<laughs> pimple. Like, very dull word. You've got your spot in. Pimple in. Look at this zit. <laughs> Summed it all up, didn't it? Hey, well, hey, when I was 16, I'd have been known as the zit kid. I, <laughs> I was covered in the things, you know. If ever I had a Mars bar, the next day I used to get a zit. <laughs> Look at that, been eating Mars. Yeah, look at that. And, uh, and, and that's it. You can't resist them, can you? Ain't. And there's your mum saying, "Don't touch your spots, Jasper. They'll spread." No, mum. One's on the forehead, the best on him. I could do four foot onto the bathroom. Maybe. Jasper, nothing, Mum. Nothing. <laughs> uh, one of the, the the funniest thing that happened to me out there, and this is really true, honestly, is um, in 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 the states when you license your car, your license plates, your number plates. Uh, you get them from the sort of the state authorities. And you can, in fact, have anything on your li license plate that you want to. It doesn't matter. Uh, as long as no one else has got it, you can have, you know, a certain amount of letters or a certain amount of numbers or numbers in letters. It doesn't matter. And as long as no one else has got it, you can have it on your license plate, your name or anything. And there was this, there was this Englishman living in Los Angeles <coughs> with a terrific sense of humour. Terrific. And he drove, he's got this great big massive brand new Cadillac, right? And he drove round this Cadillac and got a license plate on this Cadillac. And it had got B O L L O C K S. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what it means. Is it? <laughs> I saw it, I was in hysterics. <laughs> I could not believe it, unbelievable. And, the, and I was with this American bird, and she said, uh, you know, what are you laughing at? I said, it's the, it's the license plate. <laughs> she said, yeah? Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> Is it an English word? I've never thought about it before. <laughs> What does it mean? I said, well, it's, it's English slang <laughs> for zits. <laughs> anything I could think of at the time, I said, I can do. And she believed me, too. Man, she's coming over to England this year. <laughs> God help her if she walks into boots. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in boots and you see a young American woman with a truss on her head you all know what it's all about. <laughs> I think on that note, I'd better clear off. Thank you very much. Good night. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. The return of Malcolm, the voluptuous camel herder! Oh, 
Robinson. <laughs> Come on! What a fiddle! Oh. Are you promised? <laughs> what a cop-out! <laughs> I reduced the fee and all. <laughs> <laughs>